I arrived to Gaza roughly two months after the latest war in 2014. Upon arrival to the first farming family I already knew, a grieving sorrow awaited me. The family home of Jamila Zanin and her offspring had been leveled to the ground. The only remaining structure of the house was a stairway to their balcony, a sore reminder and a testimony that the rubble was once a home. Her family has hosted me and my fixers during my previous visit. The table was full of delightful Palestinian dishes, such as ma'luba, hummus and the da'a salad. Pale white eyebrows on Jamila's face have struck me. From the last time I saw her, the color has completely vanished from them. The families I've worked with have all been seriously affected by the atrocities of war. Most of them have lost their farmland and their homes. In worst cases, they've lost their family member. I started examining foreign and domestic social issues and tensions I believed were a fundamental outcome of a war while still a teenager. My camera enabled me to articulate what I perceive as the Western indifference towards people living in developing countries, caught in between the interests of geopolitical superpowers. Samira Aldaberi, whose leg was amputated during the second war in Gaza in 2012, had to hire workers to help him cut and remove of what was left from his completely destroyed olive tree plantation in the southern town of Rafa. The Aldaberi family lived next to the farm, but their house got destroyed during the war, so they now have to rent another home. War has critically weakened the agricultural economy and left much of the farmland destroyed or unable to be cultivated. During my previous visit in the same period, in 2013, it was harvesting season. This year, olives, eggplants and clementines were not there to be harvested. Because most of the Palestinian farmland is located at the so-called buffer zones, a no-man's land that was established as a safety barrier between Israel and occupied Gaza Strip, farmers struggle to survive and provide for their families in a very dangerous area. Bullets and tank shells often land in their field. Jian and Muhammad Abu Da'a were raising five children in a town of Hanunnes. Their house was located roughly 300 meters from the Israeli border. Even before the last escalation of violence, the lives they were living would hardly be imaginable to people fortunate enough to live in peace. Along with the great deal of land that the family has lost due to the establishment of the buffer zones, the remaining land was considered to be too dangerous to use, so workers didn't want to come work for Muhammad. In addition, the family transformed their rooftop into a playground, a playground that was surrounded by fences, tanks and sniper towers. Muhammad and Jian did their best to be good parents, so the children would do well in school. In fact, their kids were A students. After the war, the family was forced to move into a shelter home and now live in a United Nations refugee school, in an overcrowded classroom with several other families. As a result, the children's focus and will to study dropped. Their mother says that they're too stressed out from living in a classroom and that they're too tired from waking up at four in the morning every day. The kids are now hiding their grades from their mother and father, embarrassed because they're not doing as well in school. The overall situation of Palestinian farmers is more than unfortunate. Thousands are still numb from the war and are still coping with loss, Others are trying their best to restore their land, despite the lack of heavy machinery, such as tractors and bulldozers, so that they can thereby restore their only income. We were sitting in Khalil Zanin's farm, in the northern part of the Strip, when a man on a donkey cart passed us by. They greeted each other by raising a hand, and a little after, Khalil told me that the man, a fellow farmer, has lost 17 members of the family and was the only one that survived. Seventeen. A great majority of casualties in modern conflicts aren't the fighters. This is why I aim my camera at the world beyond fighting and blood and work to document the ongoing life after the war, a life that is affected by the devastating consequences and inhumane acts of violence. For me, the main story of every war isn't the fighting, but what the military casually calls the collateral damage. In other words, civilians and their struggle to survive long after the bombing has stopped. Thank you.